What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples and the things they go through. Today, we sit down with a couple that I'm really excited about. Same. Uh, we had an opportunity to interview them a couple weeks ago. We blew it. Uh, <laughs> we literally had to cancel on them two minutes, five minutes before the interview because Drew had a meltdown. Like her first We didn't ever. have a babysitter. It was just a mess. Our options were, one, do the interview with a crying baby. Or to cancel the interview. So we made the hard choice and had to cancel. So and the people we had to cancel on are Tim and Demi Lee Tebow. I'm not going to lie. I got a guy crush for <laughs> sure. Tim obviously was a fantastic football player at the University of Florida, won the Heisman Trophy there, then got drafted into the NFL and had a fantastic career there. He currently is a professional baseball player and a three t- three time. New Three York time. Times bestselling author. Yeah. Three time New York Times bestselling author. <laughs> He's done it all. I mean, to go from NFL to MLB is incredible. And then his wife, Demi Lee, was Miss South Africa. Yes. Then became Miss Universe. Yes. Miss Universe. Think about that. That's a big deal. And she then went on to use her platform to for incredible causes. She encourages self-defense, especially for women. She shares that story in this interview. They just had a lot of really cool things to talk about. One, including the proposal, which is the most it's epic un- story. It's unbelievable. It should be a movie. It's the notebook. I mean, it's already a movie. Um, but they were awesome to talk to. They had great insight, great advice, especially for new couples. Tim and Demi Lee are both others focused. It's super inspiring. Tim puts on uh, the Night to Shine event, which hosts uh, a special prom for special needs. Mm -hmm. And that's actually how he and Demi Lee met. But I'll let them tell the story. Uh, And Demi Lee, as Sean was alluding to, is a huge advocate for self-defense after a carjacking incident. Um, Anyway, today's conversation was really fun. There's a little banter going back and forth at the beginning of us talking SEC football since I also played in the SEC along alongside Tim. Uh, not alongside you Tim. You just needed to get that in there, Alongside Tim. I, <laughs> oh, my gosh. If you want to find out more about Tim and Demi Lee, you can find more about them in the show notes down below. And also uh, subscribe to the show and give it a rating if you haven't yet. Yes. Should we just go ahead and I think get into we the episode? Should. All right, let's do it. Tim and Demi Lee Tebow. Tim, Demi, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. I do want to start off, Tim. Um, we met, I doubt you remember this, in 2015 uh, in the Allstate Sugar Bowl. I was down there. You were on the sidelines looking not as fresh as you do today, but you had like a nice little suit on. I think you're announcing, um, but it's good to good to see you again. And thank you guys for taking the time to, to talk. Uh, we have a fun little conversation planned here. I know. I can't wait. <laughs> we've been following you guys for so long. We love your relationship and everything you guys are about. So we've been really excited for this one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks for having great. us. We're so, we're so glad we have the chance to hang out for a little bit and have a great conversation. I agree. I think we able to connect with more people than we usually do in this lockdown period. So I know. It's Honestly, been awesome. I yeah. Got into Me, so unfortunately, way too many like Zoom calls, FaceTime. <laughs> but like we're, we're both pretty affectionate so we're like we're huggers and so like I think we're like kind of it's, it's nice to- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we went to an yeah. event at the beginning of all this so it was right before like quarantine started and we're we're pretty affectionate people Andrew's the hugger I'm I'll go in for the hug but it was when people started throwing elbows like oh you want to tap elbows and it it just got so yeah I'm not the hugger I do distinctly remember we were at MIT. Andrew went in for a hug with Andy uh, Roddick and Brooklyn Decker. And it was like the, the most awkward hysterical. They're good friends of ours now, but it was the most awkward. Like, uh, no, I got uh, stiff arm straight no. up. I got stiff arm. <laughs> By who? Uh, Brooklyn Decker. Brooklyn yeah, Decker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I, my, my prides will be, it'll be forever damaged, but well, I'll go over so, at some point. She's so sweet and nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah no. no, we're good friends with them and everything, but yeah. it was just funny. I was like, babe, you just got turned down. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> quick side note too, Tim, I'm a, I'm a Commodore, so I don't know how you feel about that, but 
you know, we had the pleasure of beating the Gators down in the swamp a couple years ago. That was by luck. I don't know what his response is about to be. Did you hear that? She said, (laughs) 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 Why you got to hurt my feelings? (laughs) Unfortunately, she's wearing bulldog colors, though, at least. Oh, man. Um, Okay. That was... um, that was a good conversation. I want to hear. I want to hear how you guys met. I have a response for the Commodores, though. <laughs> All I'm saying is we beat you guys. Uh, okay, continue. Well, you know, <laughs> the, yeah, yes. Unfortunately, the Gators lost, but mm-hmm. fair, fair enough. enough. Fair, fair enough. enough. Fair, fair enough. enough. All right. There's, there's <laughs> I can go with this whole conversation. Uh, Your message yeah. is loud and clear, Tim. Coming through loud and clear. Yeah, um, we all we all agree. Please do us a favor. You know, I'm the newest follower. It was always fun when we go play because the city was so great, though. <laughs> Jeez. I love it. Is this gonna <laughs> freaking plague the conversation? Yes, <laughs> babe. Um, I'm the newest follower of the Tebow Pack. Oh my gosh! Oh, Demi just found out what a Commodore is. Oh yeah, I didn't know. It's some like pirate thing it's a captain of captains if we're being technical but let's carry on what type of mascot is that the tebow pack is sweeping the nation it's the hottest thing on instagram right now i do have to ask what's it like having three little baby children now well it's one <laughs> it's wonderful it's really been oh they they are so sweet they're growing up so fast kobe and chung just got their adult teeth so they have like these like big front teeth that doesn't fit in their mouth right now. So they suck. They're weird. <laughs> and Paris loves getting on this white couch, especially when mm. she's muddy and comes out from the rain. Uh, um, but it's it's crazy, crazy, crazy how much joy they bring. It's, it is yeah, so fun. And yes, Paris still um, pees in the house and. <laughs> She ate the Wi-Fi cord this she, morning. She did. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so they're absolute joy givers. They and it's been, it's been so much freaking fun. I think them. just the, loyal, the loyalty that dogs have is so precious and so special. And, you know, just like going to give them breakfast in the morning and how excited they are to see you oh, and how they so love fun. you. And it, it's really sweet. I know. Especially with Paris. She's, she's deaf. And she's oh. pretty um, rambunctious. Hearing, and... I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, she uses her senses and stuff. She can hear a tiny bit. She doesn't know where it's coming from and stuff. Um, but it's like she's, be- I think because of that, a little bit sensitive. And so she's like, you can tell she's also gets super attached, you know? Yeah. And she, she will literally hang on my hip like a baby. Yeah. It's she crazy. Has- it's the, like it's the so best backstory i wanted paris and then we found out on her eight week checkup that she's hearing impaired so i was like well Tim, now we, we can have to get her no and i said she came to me. me i finished up a meeting right in this room i walked out and she's jimmy is all just disheveled and flustered and, I was like, <laughs> and she's um talking about paris and she's like she's deaf and I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. Well, you know, we can, we can, we can look somewhere else. We can do whatever you want." And she's like, "What? No!" <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon, so uh, we got in the car and drove for a few hours, picked her up, and then we decided that she needed to have some brothers. So then we also yeah, got so her we some have brothers. Yeah, a cuddle buddy and two watchdogs. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I was going to say, do you guys, you know, explore the possibility of, of not just jumping straight to three, but maybe going <laughs> yeah. maybe one or two starting and starting one. off. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do one. I, I, cause I think with just our schedule, they need to have friends and they need to be able to. So I was like, you know, it'd be better if we at least get two then. And you honestly, taken six I, I had, I had, I had six picked out and, um, were you going to get six? I went from one to three, and he went from six to three. So I yeah, think we met at three. Wow, what a beautiful story of compromise right there. Are you listening to this? We're not going to get another So that dog. means we need three to Just, six. What are you doing to yes. us right now? You yes. two. <laughs> okay, I am curious. 
Did you guys have a dog together before the three? No, she she had the chance to meet my uh, my last dog who died this past fall. His name was Bronco. Um, I got him when I got drafted by the Broncos, and um, he is an amazing dog. Um, he passed away in the fall, and um, he's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. So it was, it was beautiful, beautiful dogs. dogs. Yeah, they're amazing. So it was kind of oh, he was, but he was Bronco is like a person. Yes. He was. <laughs> Right now, he wouldn't sit on the floor. He would sit right here. If we'd get, <laughs> he would look like if there was three people in there, the four seat is his. He would get in there and <laughs> he would to, like everything was like a person. And I loved it, but he also you didn't. You, he, oh yeah, he like spoke English, like no English. doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no, you couldn't no, sit. Exactly but she didn't love all of the tendencies because he would. I would honestly, from the time he was eight weeks old, I fed him off of a spoon. He, he split just breakfast and this. lunch, and like yes. he was a person. Split br- breakfast with the same spoon. Like here, here you go, Bronco. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> so okay, I don't know if you guys are anything like us, but she didn't let me do it now. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't either. Uh... Has a dog or three dogs, have they, so with our dog, before we had Drew, our daughter, we argued more about the dog than anything else. Because here's the situation. Sean treated A dog, dog is a human being. Yeah. For me. And so a for me, percent. I love dogs, but yes. Sean is just another level. Did you guys go through this or no? He needs his own room. He needs home cooked food. And then we always disagreed on different things. Have you guys noticed that you have any differences when it comes to raising your puppies? Yes. I don't think as big as a difference. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. For sure. But I, um, I like um, treating them even more off of the table or my plate mm-hmm. or the joy that it brings. And she's like, you're treating, you're teaching them bad manners and they're going to be <laughs> And so there's nothing more irritating than having guests over and the dog is like jumping on you. And I'm like, Timmy, I don't want people come, like coming to visit us and be like, well, yeah, we're going to see Tim and Timmy, but oh man, the dog is so irritating. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, if you our dogs, you don't like us. Okay. That's my page. I'm on that page. Yeah, I think Demi and I are more vibing. <laughs> yeah. For sure. If you don't like my dog, you shouldn't come over to our house. <sighs> Yeah. Um, I don't know. I want to be manner too, but there's like some things that I just don't care about. Like I want them to be nice. I want them to be kind. I want them to be um, loving. I want them to be sweet, but like, I want them to have personality. I want them to jump on me. I want them to <laughs> wrestle. I want to play with them. I don't want to like overly train them where like you sit, you stay, you don't bark, you don't, you know, you take away their personality. And so I think training's good, but like, I don't want a robot. I want a, I want a friend, you know? You see how he leaned up when he gave that answer? He was like that passionate about it. He went from <laughs> this to like this. Let me. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, but. And you do weigh over 100 pounds more than me. That's so true. Chunk jumps on you when he's 100 pounds, not gonna make it big of an impact as soon as jumps on I know. You should see the three of um, them wrestle with me. It is. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I was like, wow, like this, this puppy thing is, re- is really like preparing. Like with children. She told me this like, last night, and then she was like, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, like I feel like I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, yeah, just go for it, guys. I, uh, <laughs> they are picking up Do you hear? They said, just go for it. Yeah. No, she, she said that. Uh, um, does one of you want more kids? Like, Tim, are you trying to have like six kids? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, children want to yeah, we both want kids. I, um, uh, I love kids dogs um like people i'm very um like i love people around i love the chaos i'm the baby of five um we we it's just an understatement we love 
every single room in the house to be filled with people all the time. I like people. I do. I just, uh, I'm very, uh, I, to a certain extent, I feed off of it. I get joy off of people, uh, the relationship aspect. I think that's one area where like we differ and we have to understand each other is she likes people, but then she needs a little bit of like Demi her time. Demi time where she rejuvenates having, you know, 45 minutes um, yeah, doing her Take me to your bath or go do my nails. What I, I just need a little... Yeah, I need, and I don't really energy. need that as much. People energize. Me. Yeah, they so energize they me a little theory. bit more. Or maybe we come off of a day where we have people over, and she needs to have a little bit of time doing her stuff, and and then I, for me, it's like I can kind of go right into the next thing because they've been over and How about I get you energy. Guys? Uh, we're exactly the same. I like my time and my space. I'm also an only child. Wait, what? What? Okay. And he's on. one of five, <laughs> and he just loves people all the time. I'm the middle of five, so, you know, I have a baby brother. I kind of understand what you're about now, Tim, after <laughs> understanding this. But I, I'm a bit very social guy, but I definitely need, like, an hour quiet time. If I don't have that, I go berserk. berserk. I, I need that a little bit, I, but I... I think everyone needs it a little bit. I just don't need it as much as Jimmy does, nor do I yeah. want it as much, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also for my time. I, it's, I don't need to be totally isolated. Like I can still have two or three of my friends over and still have that time where she needs it to be her thinking and processing and meditating ish, you know? Yeah. yeah. I would be the same way. Um, Okay, so Demi, I saw you're trying to do these 300 shuttles, or no, you're not trying. You're demolishing the 300 yard shuttles. Do you guys do you guys work out well together? Because Sean and I have not figured that out. <laughs> I do different workouts than him, obviously. But... I feel like we I feel like we run good together, and we do more so if, when I finish a workout, and then I like will help her little things or hey, try this. Yeah. Um, it's better. Um, but sometimes it's fun just being in the gym with together. each other and I'm doing my thing, he's doing his thing and in between breaks, like catching up on things or I think we both are pretty good with getting more than one thing done at the same time. Yeah. So we do a set and then catch up on this. Or and honestly, it's kind of nice, or, especially for like me when I'm a, yeah, a very much a multitasker, ADD, like I would love to finish a set and Hey babe, what do you think about this? What do you you know? And then it's it's nice for me. Sometimes it's easier to do that like in action than it is to just sit down on a couch and we have our best conversations when we do something. Is it, honestly, our best conversations are hot tub, uh, playing you know playing a game uh, oh in the sauna, do you working guys out. Play nerds? Have you ever played nerds? It's a card game. Nerds. 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 N E R T. No, please, please no, inform we, us. We love game night. So, what is this game gamers. about? We just found out last Wednesday night about it, and it's kind of like we played like seven times already. But, but <laughs> yeah, the best. It's, so anyway, it's like five, five minutes of havoc. It's, <laughs> I like, I like the sound, sound of, that. of that. It is. It's like as fast as you can move cards, and you're playing everything. And oh, that's not my vibe. Sean would demolish me. In I that. love that. <laughs> I like that. I feel like Andrew is probably envious of you guys working out together. That was one thing we had to learn very early on in our relationship is cannot work out together. Okay. So why? Andrew, Andrew likes Bro. to like do the sets and talk and he likes to make a 30 minute workout last two hours. I'm like all business. I want to get in and I want to get out. No, but and on top I always of that, correct his form, which yeah, he gets really on top bad of that, about. she's in there and like <laughs> insulting me, like I'm a freaking newbie in the gym. I'm like, Sean, I've done this a time or two. You don't have to tell me how my how my power clean form sucks. It's like <laughs> I'm helping so, you out anyway, in the long we're, run. We're still figuring it out. We're optimistic, guys. What's those best um, exercise? Are we about to compare PRs right now? <laughs> no. Tim? Like, what is what is Sean, <laughs> Sean like? Like she, she coach you on like what's your best exercise where she's like you need to do this and this isn't good enough. 
Well, let me just tell you a little story here, Tim. Wait, no, let me tell you a story. During his <laughs> pro day, I upped his bench by 75 pounds. You're welcome. Okay. No, no, no. By like 12 reps. Yeah, you did. That's, That's true. true. Up, Sean, you upped his bench by 12 reps. Yes. Dude, she put me through this. <laughs> <laughs> she this episode's now so about So you should now want but, to want to work out with me. Okay. <laughs> she put me she put me through this like insane bench press program. It was not scientific or smart at all, yes. but it was just like Yes, it she was. was. Like, You're going to bench press until you can't move your arms anymore. And I was like <laughs> it's not how I was I like, "Okay, it. I'm here for it." Um, but so I'm I'm getting into CrossFit. I don't know what your guys' feelings are on that. And there's a lot of gymnastic skills in there. And so I'm trying to learn, you know, handstands and like these kips, whatever. Um, Sean was trying to teach me for like a year and a half. But every time we'd, we'd start like practicing, she would just, she would just be like appalled that I couldn't get it. No, like he just she did on her first try. Me. So one day I just stumble in there trying to do my own practice. And there's this like little eight year old girl. And I'm like, how the heck I, I got to learn this kip. We we're like, who was also a gymnast. Yeah. And she taught me in no joke, 30 seconds. This you little eight year old did. And I'm like, there you go. There you go. Anyway. Okay. We're getting way <laughs> off topic. Back to you guys and your relationship uh, because I have questions. Okay. So I think it's important just on that note to like, just figure each other out and see what works for you. And yeah. Yeah. And you don't work out well together, then just maybe be the water girl. Like, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so we each get our alone time that we need during the day working out at separate times. So it works out perfect. Honestly, you two should be the host of this podcast. If we're, if we're being real, <laughs> Sean and I just banter back and forth. <laughs> um, okay. So I really would love to know, and I think everyone else here listening would like to know, how did you guys meet? I want to get into like relationship conversations. Um, oh, it's actually a sweet story. Go ahead. You want me to tell it? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, My last year, she ended up being a matchmaker um, through the TTF Foundation's um, like Night to Shine, to shine yeah. Worldwide Prom that they have once a year. Um, in 2018, the first, prom, the first Night to Shine was in South Africa as well. So, well, the, it was, we it had was been doing it for time. years. It was the first, first time, time it was in South Africa. Yeah. We, it's I a worldwide it's prom for, for people with special needs, and we, we have it all around the world. And it was the first time it was in South Africa. And um, that's where I'm from. And um, so, Tim, I, was, I just moved to New York at that time. I, I had been in this universe, and I, you know, I guess somehow you talked about her sister and special about my needs. Sister and, uh, so we yeah, invited but, her, her family, her sister to um, the, the Night to Shine the there in South Africa. To shine. And although my sister couldn't go just because of her health condition, um, my parents got to be volunteers and we stayed in touch and um, we, we set up a phone call, like 10, 15 minute phone call that, you know, just to go over logistics and find out more about Night to Shine. And um, he called me and I mean, this quick, phone call that was supposed to be 10 minutes lasted two hours 24 minutes and six seconds whoa whoa <laughs> down to the second <laughs> it wasn't the day after that that we hadn't spoken no. so and we had met yeah we, we hadn't had met, met in person before, yeah. so we hadn't even met passing we were lucky no dates back and nothing forth and yeah just yeah so it went yeah to the email then we had the first um, phone conversation and then that led to like a week we had another one and no, then we were the next day we had was it the next day yeah. and then oh. and, yeah and then all then we finally got the chance to have our first date and then like it was it was that. a wrap wait i don't mean to be nitpicky here but you guys first connected over the younger sister how did the connection was it did you slide in the dms tim how did that first how did that happen? Um, yes, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, my dude. <laughs> After my sister's birthday, or I made a post about her, and Tim picked that up and um, sent me the night yeah, shine video. And, and it, 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 yeah, yeah, and it, it it honestly did start from the just the foundation side of 
we invited her, the foundation invited her, blah, blah, blah. And then um, it, it was getting, like, it was getting more thinking. information. And then it was like, well, tell us more about it. What is it? Where is it? And so then it was, then um, we went to email. So we, then we went back and forth on email a few times. And then it was, um, to, more, yeah. and mm -hmm. to talk logistics. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how soon after this phone call that we now have down to the second, um, which is amazing <laughs> that you know that detail. Um, how long after the phone call did you guys start like dating? And then how did the dating progression go? How long did you date before you got engaged? Well, we knew um, when we got off that phone call, something special. And so she was traveling and I was traveling. I was in the middle of baseball season. She was on my Miss way. Universe going all over the place. I was on my way to like a seven week out of and, country and so, trip. And so. so she had to go to seven countries in seven weeks. And so I was like, oh, shoot. I need to freaking be able to take this girl on a date before she goes. Because then I might not have the chance, you know? <laughs> and mm -hmm. we found a way and... Um, and we, after a game, I rushed over to see her. We met, we, uh, we hung out. And, um, and honestly, at the end of that, it was, I think both of us knew. Yeah, we were like, you, honestly, we're like, probably getting married. <laughs> on the first, the first real date. The first date, you told me at the end, you're like, wow, I think you just had my last first date. Yeah. Wow. What a freaking I'd line, Tim. You're like out of a <laughs> freaking romantic movie, man. Yeah, can I, we have a movie made of you guys? Jeez. Um, okay. Real though, that was real. Like we were like, it's. <laughs> it was. I don't know. It was just so so easy that way. Um, yeah, right. yeah kind of hard to describe. But. Yeah. I have a question about this, and this might be. A little, I'm diving into a deeper question. So you guys are very openly faith based, which we love, and I'm curious. We've asked a few different couples about this. You you say after your first date, you're like, I, I think this is the last first date. Do you believe in the one? Um, yeah, I think I think that, that God sets up someone special for us. And I think there's it's very different, right? I mean, yeah. some some, you know, there's incidents in people's life where one their you know, significant other passes away. And so there's a lot of uh, you know, I don't think that's something we could just say that there's um, just one, just I one like but I do feel like God um, picks someone special and puts them in your life for a reason, for a purpose. And I mean, um, you know, it's arguably one of the most passionate things for me is, is being able to fight for people that can't fight for themselves and a big population of that is special needs. And for her to have a, a special needs sister and for, me to first see her doing an interview of that, talking about her sister. And I was, and we were getting ready to have, you Night know, to Night to Shine in South Africa. Africa. And this is South Africa. I was like, my heart was like, it was like, oh, wow. Like I was even blown away listening to her interview of it. And I was like, mm -hmm. told her, you got to invite her if they're there to be a part of this. So we can honor her sister as well as all the other special needs guests. And we crown every single one as the king or the queen of the prom. And like for us, it was, and then, you know, a few weeks later when we finally got to have our conversation and whenever it was later, we had our first date, it was just so easy that it, it did feel like it was just, that special it just in, worked. It just felt in right. right and ordained-ish, yeah. you know? Um, and so I think that there's dis different circumstances for different people, but I think it's all part of God's bigger plan for all of us. Hey, today's show is brought to you by Ashford University. Dreams, we all have them. The small ones are easy to talk about, but the big ones, the ones that we really want, not so much. It's like, if we say them out loud, they have no chance of coming true. Well, I say when it comes to your future, dream big. In fact, the bigger, the better. And the dream of a better tomorrow starts with a degree from Ashford University. Ashford University's online bachelor's and master's degree programs allow you to learn on a convenient and flexible schedule. I actually did online classes and it was amazing because you did have that convenience of continuing your lifestyle from the comfort of your own home. And at Ashford, expert faculty teaches you real world skills from real world experience 
an online class is built for life's twists and turns. With 24 seven access to your classroom, daily support and financial aid. Hear that financial aid is available. Ashford gives you the tools you need to help make your dreams a reality. And Ashford has 60 plus programs like business administration, healthcare administration, and psychology. So dare to dream big. Your tomorrow starts today at Ashford University. There's no fee to apply or standardized testing required to enroll. That's Thank goodness. huge. Thank goodness. Yes, we all know we suck at those. <laughs> Go to ashford.edu slash couple things. That's ashford.edu slash couple things. Ashford.edu slash couple things. Oh, and not all programs are available in all states. So make sure you get online to check which ones are available where you are. And also, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Care Of. Yes. I've been taking these for years. two years, years, three years. It's so, so convenient. So it's your daily vitamins. I was taking daily vitamins before Care Of, but it was... 20 different pill bottles that I would have to sort through every day. Chaos. Trying to remember how to take them, what quantities, and traveling was yeah. a nightmare. But with care of, you go online, you take a quiz, you say, I want to work on my digestion, I want to be able to sleep better, I want my hair to feel thicker. Whatever your issues are or things you want to work on and improve, it then curates your perfect kind of like um, concoction. supplement concoction yeah. cocktail. Yeah. And they put it into these little packets. And they send you once a month a box filled with enough packets for the entire month. You take one packet, you open it, take those pills. That's your supplements for the day. It's awesome. It's super easy. And they really give you all the vitamins that you need uh, in a way that is easy to remember to take them. Because I didn't struggle with that as much, but you definitely I did. did. I took it all the way through my pregnancy. They were my prenatals. So I would, re I would go back online and say, okay, I'm pregnant. I need to redo kind of my my cocktail of supplements. They would send me my prenatals. Now I use them postpartum. I use them literally for everything and they're genius. And they have a lot of good products. So they have the vitamins like Sean was talking about. They also just came out with a collagen line. Yep, and their beauty line. So they have collagen creamer, they yeah. have collagen protein, yeah. they have flaxseed, chia seed, tons of different things. You like the collagen cr uh, creamer. I creamer. love the collagen yeah. creamer, the vanilla one. It's, it's not so a collagen. Good cleaner it's a college it's a creamer. collagen creamer also if you guys go to the, their website takecareof.com tell me it's not one of the most zen experiences ever it's so good the website is just beautiful so anyway if you guys want 50 percent off your first care of order go to takecareof.com and enter code couple things 50 that's 50 percent off for your first order of care of which is amazing go to takecareof.com and enter code couple things five zero Try it out. Let us know what you think. Let's get back to it. We did. Uh, we spoke with Jeremy and Addie Camp. I think I'm pretty sure you guys know Jeremy and Addie, and uh, I think they speak on this topic so well. What'd you say? Hey, South African. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What are the odds? It's nuts. Um, They're an awesome couple. But Jeremy talks about how there. Yeah, there's not just one person, but. God does put these people in your life for a reason at a certain time. And you know, whatever that looks like, however, if there is an ending to that, it's like, I, he spoke about it very well. And I really respected, you know, having to deal with something that tragic, his perspective on it is, uh, is really, really cool. But and, yeah. And, yeah. And give a shout out to his movie. It's just so good. And we're it's grateful incredible. for his life and their impact and their testimony. And they're just such great role models and, yeah, they're sweet people. And they're such a sweet couple. I mean, <laughs> yes. good I've never met people. either of them. I feel like I know them. I'm I know. Interested in so, but social media makes you feel like you know everyone. I know. I know. I think you definitely have a thicker <laughs> South African accent, though, Demi. Really? Compared. Way longer than me. I've only been here for two years, and I irritate myself so much when I end up Catching on from him and saying "rass" instead of "ross." He doesn't want to look <laughs> "ross." So I don't want her to lose it. But sometimes it's just you just kind of fall into it and you just adapt because people don't understand when you ask for water. <laughs> I feel like we should all say it like you do. Water. Water. It makes it sound so like. I would luxurious. pay more. I would pay more if someone said, "Do you want to buy some water?" And I'll be like, yeah, I'll give you 20 bucks. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I have to go back to the first date. So first date or technically first date, you guys 
finish the first date and you're like, I think that's our last first date. What was it about each other? What was the first impression? What was it that you felt that made you feel that way? I'll go. To me, I think, um, one, I'd never watched a football or a baseball game in my life before mm. I met him. I'm like 100% honesty, never, didn't even know what a quarterback was. Like, I thought it's a coin or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, one of his friends told me, he's like, yeah, when we went to the Heisman and the Heisman, I'm like, who's that man? I'm like, what Heisman? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no idea. So I think like just being able to get to know Tim, like for who he is. And then, um, you know, obviously before meeting him, I did a little bit of research, just making sure <laughs> that I have kosher. No, but the best, and- the best part about it is she knew me as the night to shine guy. Yeah. Oh, that's the night to shine guy. You know, I thought it was so cool. (laughs) So that was when I first moved here. I, you know, with my sister, the Miss Miss Universe organization was like, you should check this organization out. Your sister, that could be, you know, so awesome. And that's how I, when when you first reach out, that's how I remember them. But anyway, model of the story is, I think for me, um, what made me just really instantly fall in love with him was just. Just seeing his sincerity and how authentic he is and how genuine he is and, you know, videos or things I might have seen on social media that it was, it was even better in person and, uh, you know, that he was just, just so real. And I think just, um, we shared a sense of humor and we laughed and had great conversations and that was important to me just to have good conversations and, we cared about so much of the same things. Yeah, I think when you were like, when an outsider sees it on a surface level, it's like I've been into sports, she's been into passion, you know, like yeah. uh, pageants and and, <laughs> uh, pageants and, modeling and, um, and different things I'm very far from. But that's such surface level, like sports or pageants, not who you are, it's just part of what you do, you know? And, um, and you know how many conversations we've ever had about that? like. Honestly, probably two handfuls. Yeah. Like that's it. The, but and when we talk about sports, I don't even tell her like what I'm working on or something. It's like the deeper part of it. It's the heart or it's the passion or it's the purpose or it's the meaning behind it. And I think from surface level, it didn't, doesn't look like we have that much in common. But on the, on the deeper level, on like the heart posture level, I think that's where we really connected. Uh, the heart for special needs, the heart for people, the silly humor the like to have fun kind of make fun of yourself um the uh, i think the accent also was <laughs> wait the accent on both sides because tim has zero accent he it's an american accent from south african right yeah, i guess that's true her accent is unbelievable i love it yeah it is pretty spectacular demi tim's always like in, in Afrikaans, you'll be like, what's wrong? What happened? Why are you fighting with your mom? I'm like, come on. I just, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most harsh language ever. <laughs> From Dutch, German, and Latin. So it's got like really harsh sounds. Sounds like they're fighting though. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've never heard it, so I wouldn't know. But yeah. Tim, you said, you said it's even better in person. Does that apply to Tim's biceps as well or no? no okay uh i do i do want to talk about the proposal tim because i'm really intrigued at uh how you pulled this off let me just give you some background on how i proposed to sean i didn't know i was i didn't know i was going to propose until that morning really romantic actually it it all kind of it all kind of like finalized. I didn't know I wanted to marry her until, you know, no, no, that day. I, had, I got the ring and I was going to, I got it right before my first training camp with the chiefs. And so I was going to wait th- through my rookie season and propose after, after the season. But, um, I sat down with a mentor and I was like telling him, yeah, I got the ring. I'm pumped. He's like, well, what are you waiting on to, to propose? I was like, well, I don't know. I just, you know, I wanted to wait till after the season. He was like, nah, Think about doing it at the next uh, memorable event that you guys both attend. And so I looked at the schedule and I was like, well, she's throwing out the first pitch at the Cubs game tomorrow. 
So let me just, I, I called these people up. I was like, Hey, like, what if I wanted to propose? Like, what would that look like? Could we make that happen? He was like, let me call you back tomorrow. The day of the game. The guy didn't call me back until like an hour and a half before I actually did. So it all came together very quickly. Mm-hmm. I, I say all that because I get the sense that yours was a little bit different. <laughs> the whole engagement. Yeah, it was slightly similar, except totally opposite. (laughs) (laughs) This engagement for, yeah, probably six months. Jeez. I was putting in lies in her head for six (laughs) months. Okay. Like, he was telling me, I want to do something special for my dad on the farm. Like, what ideas do you have? What, what could we get him I was playing Christmas? it up, playing like, it up, playing it up. None of my ideas were good enough because it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it was hard. I had to plan it in between such busy days and stuff. So we had, um, we were for Christmas, we were in South Africa, and it was in between bowl games. So we made it. Uh, or first of all, we were in. My family was in Israel. She was giving up her crown in South in, Thailand. Uh, Thailand. I flew from Israel to Thailand for like nine hours, and yeah. went to support her giving away her crown. Flew with her from Thailand, South, South Africa, Africa, flew to one part of South Africa, spent two days with this family. Um, secretly asked those parents for permission. Then we got on a plane, flew to the other part of South Africa with that side of her family. Secretly asked them for permission. Celebrated Christmas on Christmas Day. Flew back to the states. Had to go to uh, semifinals, uh, whatever semifinal yeah. it was that year, uh, to work at Free ESPN. Then flew with to Miami. the Sh- Sugar Bowl to work that with the ESPN. And, and then uh, what? Had, then it was we had to go to the national championship, which was in. San Francisco, San Jose, right outside of San Francisco. And so that was Alabama versus Clemson. Finished the game, got on a plane um, uh, to get back in time for the next day. We had um, our family Christmas because we couldn't have it together. So it was January 8th, I think our yeah. Christmas was. Yeah. So we get back, like, I don't know, 10, 11 in the morning, run over, I family gets that. together. Um, we all celebrate Christmas that day. Um, the next morning we finish our Christmas and the whole family knows they're all in on it. So in the meantime, I was flying her family in and her four best friends in and they didn't know it. So we finished Christmas that morning and then we, um, we were all like, okay, we're going over to mom and dad's for the big Christmas dinner. We don't have a, we don't have a Christmas dinner, but we built it up. All my siblings, everyone was involved. (laughs) And so they They're had telling me like, what are you wearing? Remember it's Christmas dinner. Like we don't fancy. Have- oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In high but we don't I'm actually like, do this. We don't dress up. We were like pajamas for Christmas, but we were playing it up. All, all his sisters and, and, and sister in laws are like all in my room trying to find a dress and like and, uh, what I and help her, like playing it off. And so she had always said, when we get engaged, I have to have my nails done. So her and her friends promised each other. They have to have their nails done, like out of everything. Nails, it's like tiny, but it's fine. <laughs> it's because the pictures of the ring. Nobody even yes. ever looks at finger or toenail, so I don't get that, but no, that's a side all conversation. all women do, okay? You have to have your nails done. <laughs> and all her promises, why wouldn't it be like the dress or the makeup or something? <laughs> like nail polish? Anyways. And so we... Um, she, all that's done, and they're finishing getting ready, and so I have a brand-new Ford F-150 pull into um, my house and I'm like, Demi, the truck for my dad's here. And she's like, you got him a truck? I'm like, yeah, because I, I feel like she's like catching on a little bit to maybe something special could happen. And so I literally had a truck pull up with a bow on it to say, and so she's like, oh, in her heart. Oh, by the way, I just gave her a ring that this day. This one, I'm wearing it. Oh my Aww. gosh. That's a good way to throw her off. That's a good way to throw her off. Engagement you know, ring at all. She was so, <laughs> she was so like butt hurt, you know. Yeah, I would say <laughs> for any guy, if you're in the like season or sense that there's a proposal coming, and you gift a girl a ring that is not an engagement ring, that's risky territory. I like to play, Tim. Yes. But so, it totally threw her off. So the ring threw her off. The truck, the truck threw her off. And also then you were like, well, you know, I know we've been spending so much time with the family and we haven't had a lot of time for ourselves. So maybe tonight you and I just go for dinner by ourselves. And I'm like, 
okay, maybe then, but... Like, but it didn't matter. It's going to be over matter, by then, okay? You know. <laughs> yeah. So we, we get in the brand new truck with a bow on it. We drive over to my parents' house, and I had to have everybody see that we already there, and the cars I had to pull away so they can't see cars, and so they're all in the house waiting. We get there, but there is... Um, I grew up on a, a, on a mini farm on the west side of Jacksonville, and on the farm there is a little pond where uh, it was very meaningful to me. It's where I would go out and pray, where I made big decisions. I made the decision to go to Florida there. I buried um, my first dog there. I buried Bronco there. And so mm. I had a, 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 an arch built, like a photo oh. arch. And then I had a wooden bench that was handcrafted with some special wording. So just meaningful things okay. to us under the, the bottom of it. Um, planning that day, knowing that day it was made for that day. Um, and so I was like, hey, before we go in and give this to dad, let's just walk out here and take a look. I want you to see what I had done for dad. And it wasn't done for dad at all. Um, but my dad was like, we had these, all these cranes out there building this arch. He's like, what are you doing to my pasture? You know? Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're walking out there to the, the, um, to the, the pond and uh, grass and my high heels. I'm like, why are you making me walk out here on the yeah. grass? <laughs> And so we walk out there, and, um, and she, another one of the things she always asks me is if um, when I propose that someone's there to capture it. And so, obviously, yes, yes you, you have, have to have pictures. pictures. So, but she, what she didn't know is there was mics in everything around it. No, he took Sick. it apart. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we had we had videographers planted with secret cameras all around. And so we get there, and then I start telling her what she means to me, and then I get on. There was also a speaker in the living room, and so, everyone was standing So her whole family, my whole family, could, could and our friends could hear the whole thing. Sick. That's, That's amazing. amazing. And and while so everyone else is, like, peeking out of the bathroom. They're, the they're all watching, but she doesn't know. And so then I get on my knee, I propose, and, um, you know, it was just so important to me. Like, it's not about just giving a ring. It's not about just getting the act done. It's about making memories and having special moments because it's a once in a lifetime thing. And so for me, it's about everything needs to have a story of how much you care and the meaning behind it. And so, <laughs> so for, <laughs> she's yawning at me telling I'm, the story. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start yawning. So, um, so I, I gave her the ring and, um, after I told her how much she means to me and, um, and the, I searched for freaking ever and got so many people involved to find a diamond that was from South Africa, just like her. And then, um, I heard that there's this so-called thing as an internally flawless diamond. So I was wow. like, now I got to get that for her. And um, so then I, I told her that the ring's internally flawless, the diamond's internally flawless, just like you are, and it's from South Africa, just like you are. And um, so to, to, to bring that story to life, and then um, I played a song on the way over that was always kind of you our song by a South African artist named Matthew Mole called The Wedding Song. And um, it's really sweet. It's really sweet. I, I listened to it before this. It's great. I was going to sing it, but I didn't. No. Shot. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> so then I was like, you know, it's a perfect time for me to play the wedding song. So I hit play on my phone and we're standing there kind of just like swaying back and forth. And Matthew's behind a hay bale. And he walks out and picks up where it was on my wow. phone. Wow. He turns around and sees him and freaks out. He keeps playing it. But I. I kind of hold her this way yeah. and I have a cue um, to my assistant to have her, her four parents come out. And so then I turn her around and her four parents are there. She doesn't know they're in the country from South Africa. And so she sees them and my, then she like just- My parents and I are so close and I speak to them every day. Like when I wake up, I always text them. So my dad was freaking out. He like got the Wi-Fi on the plane and he's like, she's going to text me and I'm not going to respond. She's going to know. Dude, give it away. And so oh. and then just I had an awesome moment with them. And then we had their, um, her, her friends stationed in another area and then they popped out and surprised her and then my family and everybody. And so- then we just had a huge celebration that night, and then we just the party went on for a long time, and it, it was, was really fun. It was so special. Yeah, it was the best day. Demi, this I think this is the greatest engagement story I've ever heard. 
And then she told, um, and then she told my dad, she's like, well, sorry, you're not getting a truck, but you got a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <hey. laughs> okay to any guy listening take notes because i think that's the best I've Demi, ever the heard. smile on your face during that whole time he was telling the story was pretty priceless uh appreciate you that was like two days i wish i could be with Demi that day and our wedding day so yeah it's so, so special. special i just think it's important you know um you have so few times to ever relive moments like that. So, so the more like thought and detail and, and the way you can personalize it is just so it's important, you know? And um, so I just think, you know, how can you take a special moment and turn it into a forever memory? And, um, and so I think that's what's important. Tim, which were you, uh, which were you more nervous for? Was it, asking her parents for permission or actually getting on a knee or maybe maybe we could even throw like some moments in your sports career i don't know i don't know but <laughs> all i know is the moment i had to ask her dad to marry me or for his permission to let me marry his daughter bro i locked up like i'd never locked up before yeah, I, I know so she has four parents so i had to she like put <laughs> And, and I was like, I'm not that guy that I'm just going to like go to one of them and get permission. Like I went personally to all four, talk to them individually. individually, meaningful times. It's just so important. I wanted to honor her. I wanted to honor her family. I'm very traditional like that. And, um, and so I was nervous for that, but I got to tell you that there was a bit of me that was kind of excited. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> I was like the talk, you know, like I was kind of like, I, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I got to tell you, really thinking about it, I think I was most nervous for the the wedding because mm. I wanted it to go. I had more control over the rehearsal dinner or over the engagement. Um, and I, yes, a lot of it was timing and planning, but the wedding had, it was like, I knew it was so important to her that I was so nervous that everything so, went well. I was nervous for the wedding. We have a tradition in South Africa where the bride and the groom don't see or speak at least 24 hours before the wedding. So, and we don't do rehearsal dinners. We usually just have the wedding. Yeah, they don't even know what a rehearsal dinner is. We <laughs> still had one two days ago. So we did. We did. It was awesome. Incredible. And, but then the next day, we're taking the day off. I'm with my guys. She's with the girls. We're doing Incredible. everything. And But it's pouring and we're having a a, a cape dogs. town south african outdoor pretty um you know vineyards wedding outdoor. and it, i was like oh no like i just know she's crushed right now yeah. and thankfully we couldn't speak because i'm couldn't like speak. No, i'm not gonna i'm like texting with my assistant to his assistant to take to tell him like what are we doing yeah and um it was miserable, but thankfully the next day the wind and the rain calmed down. I, I woke up was, that morning and I was like, "Is it raining? I don't want to open up." Oh, I know, uh, and thankfully it was. It was, was windy, but luckily it didn't rain. Yeah. So it was good. Oh my gosh, you guys literally need a movie like a Hallmark, as just perfect as it gets movie, because it's just yeah, I would watch it. Um, okay, so we asked the same three questions to every couple. However, before you know the questions, you have to choose who goes first. Who answers first? Y'all choose who goes first. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I, we haven't gotten that answer before, which is interesting. <laughs> you usually see like husband and wife be like, no, you go or you go or whatever. Um, so Demi, how about you go first? So you guys get married. You move in. You're living together. You guys have been married now for? Four months. Four months. Four Four months. months. So you learn a lot about couples and about each other through dating, engagement, through all of it. And I always, we always think it's interesting to hear how people answer this question. But Demi, it's a two-part question. One, what's your biggest pet peeve with Tim? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> Do I have to answer that first? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what you got? <laughs> 
I leave I cans. I leave cans all over the place. Like I love <laughs> Macroy, Zevias, Ahas, and I just drink them. I don't drink soda, so I just but I drink a lot of sparkling waters that like work really hard at staying hydrated. So I just crush them and I just leave them all over the place. Empty like bottles, like I'll and, go into. But the I mean, I've never had to worry about it. Like never had someone that's been like, pick up your cans. No, I picked them up when I wanted to pick them up. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's just I'll, like, I'll wait till there's like 200 and then I'll come back and just not really. <laughs> just toss them in the bag and pick them up when I want. And she's but like, you can't just leave them. At that but she would like pick it up before I'm even fully done with it, you know? <laughs> like, oh, don't set it. Put a coaster down, but, you know? <laughs> that was a pretty good South African accent right there, Tim. I appreciate the effort. <laughs> Okay. I hold on. I'm just appalled that Demi couldn't even think of one. Fine. You got it. What's your own pet peeve? Fine. So I, I probably now would be like probably the dogs, like letting them up on the like stand up on the table and. <laughs> you know, that. Right. Or the I towel. don't get onto them when they get oh hanging on my towels. towels. Mm. Yeah, I don't hang on my towel, and he hates that. It's a bummer. <laughs> Okay, but Tim, what's your biggest pet peeve with Demi? Picking up the cans. And you know, Picking up the cans, cans yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a big one. Um, <laughs> golly. Um, I'll give you a chance to redeem yourselves after this. Don't worry. Maybe it's how, uh, how long it takes her to get ready for bed. <laughs> Preach. She's like, I'm ready for bed. And I'm like... You won't be ready, like ready for bed in <laughs> four <five> minutes. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go to the room. Let's go to bed. Listen, I have at least another half a movie or a full nap <laughs> before you're actually ready to I get in bed. She'll take. She'll get in a bath. She'll 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 brush her teeth more than any dentist would recommend. <laughs> <laughs> You have to do the skincare. You have to take the makeup off. Yes. She will put on like the Flexol cream and the deep blue cream. And <laughs> uh. I love this. He gets, he gets annoyed with me with that every night. He's like, can you turn the lights off or something? I said he gets annoyed too. Okay. So part two of the question though is... So now, Tim, you go first. What is it that you love the most about Demi? Ooh, that's, that's a much harder question. Um, <laughs> Why is there not a lot? I think... Uh, there's so many things that I think really brought us together that I love. And um, I think it would be easy for me to say conversations or laughter or fun, or especially the stupid jokes and stupid things that we do that no one else is really even privy to. Um, but I would say it would be a, um, a common link in, um, and like, I think it's our heart, heart posture for, it's the easiest way I could probably describe it, our heart posture for each other and just the um, knowing um, how much we root for each other and want to support one another and truly want to be the other's biggest advocates. Like we're each other's biggest fans. And you know, my mom said to me, the other day is she was like um, telling me, oh, you know, I'm going to pray for you so much. and I'm your biggest prayer. Warrior. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Demi's probably now your number one biggest prayer warrior. And mm -hmm. it was like so encouraging, just like, you know, just the, the advocate and the support of one another. And I think, right, like all the other things are amazing, but knowing that you have someone that you're, um, you're not there you're not just going to hang out with, right? You're not just going to go on dates with, but man, no matter what, good or bad, it's we're there for each other and we're in it. And I think um, we both have that heart posture. And I, in a long answer, I would probably say that is that um, that deeper level than 
I could probably even explain even with my parents or siblings, which I'm very close with, you know, is that. That's really sweet. That's beautiful. Okay, Demi. <laughs> um, well, you've given me a little bit of time to thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't screw it up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know how the Bible says that you know, take your husband as the leader in that house and, and look up to him. And I think for me as a wife, it's it's so special that I get to look up to him as a leader, that like I don't make decisions without him, that I want to seek his counsel and that it means so much to me and that I value it so much and that um, I can always count on his word um, and that he doesn't make promises he doesn't keep. And... Um, so that's a lot of attributes. <laughs> and I think mainly just it's um, one of the things I love most about him is that I, I get to take him as the leader of our household and respect him as that, not just because the Bible says I should, but because I really can and because he really is that great of a leader. Um, yeah. I think that's awesome. You guys are next level. I was... Uh... Tim, you were talking about how you had special words written on that arch for where you proposed. This is a terrible transition after the <laughs> heartfelt messages you just shared. But I was thinking about the special words that I might carve into wood for you. And I was the first thing that came to mind was like Chick-fil-A. So I don't know if that I don't know if that <laughs> made the list, what? but I <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you explain that I no just, i don't need an explanation <laughs> whatever anyway um you guys i love your guys's dynamic i love how much you respect one another and how you talk about each other it's again we've gotten to interview so many couples and it's always fascinating to see people's dynamics and i think they're all different which is why we love interviewing couples but your guys's dynamic is awesome and it's it's really cool to hear your story so can we close with a, a bit of advice that you might give other couples? There's a plenty of people who look up to you both. And I'm curious now that you guys are married, what you might say to someone who's about to get married or um, a little discouraged in a relationship. I would say to um, a couple that's either seriously dating, engaged or married. And I'm also saying this to myself because it truly is something I'm, I'm trying to practice and get better at. But I think what happens um, when you get engaged and when you say, I do, there's a piece of you that's saying, I'm done, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want, I got her. I wanted her. I got her. Now, I, now we're going to be together, but I'm done doing all the things that I did to get her, right? And there's a piece of that. It's like, I don't, I don't need to continue to take you on the dates. I don't need to write all the notes. I don't need to give you the flowers. I don't need to do all those little things. And the piece of advice that I would give that I'm giving to myself that I'm really trying to constantly get better at too is having the same mindset that I had on our first date. And, and it's, I don't want her to, I don't want to think about her as my wife. I want to think about her as my girlfriend. And I want to think about our relationships as still dating. Um, and I think that's important is we, we, it's, it's honestly, it's so crazy easy for that to happen. And like when we fin when we, um, finished all this, this, the ceremony at the wedding and everything, and then we went to the honeymoon, which was awesome. And then we flew from there to meet up with some of our team at night to shine, spend a few hours in, in Rome, a few hours in Paris. And then we flew or a few hours in Albania, Rome, Paris, and then, uh, then we flew and hit seven states on the East Coast and finished up Night to Shine. This was all in about two and a half days. And and then we finished that, and then which was awesome, and we loved it. And we did, did it together, and it was so much fun. And then we finished that, and three days later, or I, I had two speaking engagements, and then the next day after that, I went to baseball. And now all of a sudden, spring training started, and then life got in the way, and it was like we just got married. But it was like all these other things, and it was like – you still like even in spring training and baseball and you're trying to make it and you're trying to make to the big leagues. Right. But it's still, I can't put that goal ahead of her needs, you know? And I still got to have the same mindset I did when we were dating of every day trying to win her over, you know? 
and honor her. And I think that's important to remember because it's so easy that you just get caught up in a busy time. Life's going to get in the way, get in the way, get in the way. And then it's like, well, I don't have to put her at the forefront like I did. Yes, you do. Like that's part of our calling as husbands is you do have to honor her. You know, you do have to put her needs first. And even though other things are important is she's always that important. You know, I just would encourage guys with that. That was amazing. One thing I wanted to add was, I was so intrigued with what you were saying. <laughs> oh, this is what I wanted to say. I wanted to say that I think as newlyweds, one, we've been in quarantine for most of our like, <laughs> So, I was in spring training by three and a half weeks and I was like, oh, this is done. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing that I've learned is, you know, as individuals, we're like constantly evolving and changing and growing. And as partners, you kind of have to keep up with each other. And it's great saying like know each other and, and talk and have good, good communication. But that's also always changing, right? Because we're changing as, as humans. Um, but I think aside from that, it's also really important to um, know that, okay, yes, I need to figure myself out as an individual, but also we're, we're, we're a team now. And uh, I've realized like when we work together as a team and I feel like we've worked at doing that really well, but the outcome is always better than me trying to figure it out by myself. So I think just always looking at a situation with love and and respect for one another and you know knowing that we're in this together and fighting through whatever you're going through together whether it's figuring out how to raise puppies or a child or whatever that may be yeah but i think it also plays into that we've done so many things on our own independently and so now you're saying um like we both kind of have the mindset like or we've been in it so long like I can do this and she's like I can do this and I'm like I can do this and she's like I can do this yeah. and then it's like wait a second it's not about it's Something not about if I can do it it's that we have to do it not the the my way our way and it's it's adapting from your her way and my way to what is our way going to be yeah. you know and figuring that out and compromising compromise yeah. is definitely something we do every day for sure and it, it I pick up my cans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're so grateful that you guys gave us the time to talk today. Um, I hope you feel the same way that I know Sean and I do in that I think we have new friends. <laughs> and uh, I, I think speak for a lot of people when I – Generally, thank you for all that both of you stand for. Demi, your story is incredible. Tim, your story is incredible. And the message that you guys spread changes lives um, on so many different levels in so many different areas. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just honored to um, be able to help share that with maybe some people who haven't heard your message. Um, and I think your guys' marriage, I'm so excited. I know you're only four months in, but that's just going to be added to how you guys are going to change lives and emulate fantastic marriage and fantastic relationships. So, um, we appreciate the time and, um, I hope we talk soon. Yeah. Well, we appreciate y'all's time and thank you for having us. We're so grateful that we could both find the time to make this work and, and, uh, just thank you for the, the kind words and, and this time and, uh, y'all just, you're so sweet and we're grateful. We look forward to, I know we were supposed to hang out uh, before. <laughs> but canceled because of, yeah. yeah. Not uh, delayed. Well, delayed. Not canceled. Delayed. Yes. We uh we we have a tradition where everybody has to say go doors before they sign <laughs> no. off. So absolutely not. If we could just. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Tim was no. like Tim was offended. He was not about that. <laughs> know what that means. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Anyway, hey, thanks, guys. We'll talk later. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.